All right, I'm going to try to give you a walkthrough of lab four. So at the end of lab three, what we had was uh, we worked on the Sudoku constructor and said that we're going to leave it at fill diagonal regions. So we left it in the state that looks like that, fill diagonal regions. This is a nine by nine Sudoku, region zero, region four, region eight are complete. There's no violations so far. If I if I checked, this is a quote partial Sudoku. It's not a Sudoku. So now we've got to work on how to do these guys. So the methods that we need to fill out the rest of these. And I'm going to be really nice and go over the real hard method. Like I'm not going to give the implementation for the other helper methods, but the hard one we've got to go through together, I think. I don't want to torture you. So, <laughs> um, code, where is the code? Code is over here. There we go. Let's go from the top. So, in the constructor for Sudoku, in the constructor for Sudoku, you're passing in a size. <clears throat> I set the size attribute. This is me checking to see whether or not it's a good size or not, and, and throwing an exception if it's an invalid size. I create a new puzzle of size size. In other words, this new puzzle is of, size, if I said nine, nine, or just nine, it will be a two-dimensional array of nine. Then I set the Latin square to the puzzle. I fill diagonal regions. That's what you did in the last lab. And now we're down to this, these two methods. Set cells and fill remaining. Okay, so what are we gonna do with set cells? I'll show you how to get around code. If you hold the control button down and then select the item, set cells. Now I've got the implementation hidden because you're going to do it. So let's read what set cells does. It says, purpose of this method is to create a hash map of all the cells in the puzzle. If the puzzle is a nine by nine, there will be 81 cells in the puzzle. Makes sense. The key for the hash map is the cell's hash code. The value for the hash map is the cell. The values in the hash set for each cell's valid value should be shuffled. Okay, so what I want to do is we're going to start with that. Start with zero, zero for set cells. The, the, um, there, you can get a hash code from zero, zero. The valid values is one. And the reason why the value values is one is because it's already set. The valid values for this one would be two and three. Now this one's where it gets tricky. The valid values for this, one's not a valid value, two's not a valid value, three's not a valid value, four is so far. But when I say valid value, probably better to say possible value, but I'm not gonna change it to possible value. That's what I'm looking for. Four is a possible, five is not, six is a possible, seven is not, eight's a possible, nine's a possible. So this cell, supposedly has four values that could be. And then we'll do the same for this, and this, and this, and this, and I'll have 81 cells added to a hash map of cells. That's what set cells does. Go back over to the code. Set cells is gonna eventually add hash map items into this hash map this cells hash map. So what exactly is a cell? So I'm gonna do a little bit of trickery in this code. You've already figured out how to do a public class and how to extend the class. Cell is a class. Cell's a special kind of class. It's in this code. It's still in Sudoku, okay? Private cell, excuse me, private class cell. This is a class within a class. This is a hidden class or an inner class is what we call it in Java, an inner class. It behaves just like, uh, it behaves just like a class, except for it's only accessible within Sudoku. You can't call cell from nowhere in, like other, other than being in Sudoku, you can't call cell. You can't call cell anywhere else. You can't instantiate cell from anywhere else. It's a private class. Cell so has attributes and methods just like every other class. It's got row and column as attributes, and it's got a array list of values. 
those are the val the possible value values. Remember the uh, in this one where I had it was four and then it was six and then right the possible value values are those right. And then I've got a constructor. I've got getters. There's no setters because it wouldn't be a point of setters. I've got a hash code. Remember I said you're going to be adding them by hash code. I'm giving you the ha the the code that will generate a hash code for you. I have an equals method that tells you whether or not one cell is equal to another. This is cell. I'm giving you, I, I'll, am I giving you cell? I'm not giving you cell, but here it is. <laughs> so uh, you can, I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll scroll down so you can copy this. So I don't, I don't want to keep this one uh, hidden from you. So I've, the attributes, the constructor, the getters, I've got hash code, I've got equals implemented, and then I'm handling the array list of get valid values, set valid values, and shuffle valid values. So again, I'm giving you this code. Giving you this code. Within cell, I also have a method within cell called public cell, get next cell, C. Okay. And just, <laughs> I, I, this is a torturous method. I wrote it. There's no real point in writing this again and forcing you to write this again. But essentially what this does is you pass in a cell and it passes you back the next cell. Let's go over to Excel. If I, if you were here, if you passed in this cell, it knows that the next cell is here. And if you pass in this cell, it knows that the next cell is here. And if you pass in this cell, it knows that the next cell is here. Okay. I think I actually might have some code in here that skips over stuff too. So if I look at it, uh, but, but I'm looking to see, is it, am I doing a plus three or whatever, a square root size? Not, da, 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 da. maybe not. Maybe I'm looking at that cell. So if it's one of the pre-done cells, I thought it might have had a break in here that said, don't bother looking at it, but it does. So you pass in a cell, you do the next cell. And then eventually, if, you, at the, if you're at the end of the puzzle, it will eventually return null, right? So when this thing returns null, that means you are logically right here. <laughs> and there's nothing left, right? There's no cell to go to. So get next cell. That's it. That's it for the class. Get uh, get next cell. Returning back cell is the last method, and then the cell class. I might actually, uh, I may actually just like cut and paste this and stick it in Notepad somewhere, just so you don't have to type in the code. There's no added value learning this. This is just maybe the hash code stuff, but there's nothing else special about this. All right, so back up to what we got to do. Here we go. Here we go. Going back up to, sorry, almost there. Not that Sudoku, this one. Fill diagonal region, set cells, right? At the end of set cells, what you have is a hash map of cells. You've got a hash map of, you've got a hash map, and each one of those things in the hash map has the valid values for those cells. Now, think about what would happen if, I had those values in numerical order. So for example, remember this one was, you could, for the valid values were four, uh, six, eight, nine. Four, six, eight, nine, right? And the valid values for this one were four, five, eight, four, five, seven, nine. And the valid values for this one would be not four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one started with a four, this one started with a four, this one started with a five. Okay. What'll end up happening if I did that, if I picked, if I picked the cell in the, in the, if I picked the first item that was in that what's valid values, it's always going to be a low number, right? It's going to always going to be a low number. And that's a problem. If it's always a low number, then the Sudoku isn't sufficiently randomized because the person that's looking at this knows that these values here and probably here and probably here are gonna be low numbers, 
or most likely no load numbers. The values here will be lower than the values here. The values here would be lo lower than the values here. So that's no good. So what I got to do is I got to try to put some randomness in this. So what I did was, or what you're going to do in set cells is, let's say, remember we said four, six, eight, nine. Once you, once you collect that four, six, eight, nine, I want you to shuffle four, six, eight, nine. So it's any random that any random permutation of four, six, eight, nine. So it may pop an eight up there, right? If I pop an eight up there, the idea of bias in a region is gone. So you're, within set cells, you're also going to shuffle uh, the the remaining val the remaining valid values. Okay, so that's what set cells does. Set cells, if you think this is like zillions of lines of code, it is seven lines of code, something like that. If you're writing, so, okay, I cheated. So 117 to 127, 10 lines of code, but that's with, you know, comments. So <laughs> it's like six lines of code. Show available valid, excuse me, show available values. What does this thing do? Show available values. I'm looking for each <clears throat> each row <clears throat> and then column. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I'm saying C cells cells that get. I'm, just, uh, I'm getting a cell by the hash map, okay. And then within that, I'm saying what are the values that could be. This is like a this is a helper, right? This is there's nothing special about this. So if I ran this against that first method, it would be four space six space eight and nine, whatever those first four values were. This just spins out the valid values for a given cell. That's all that does. Not, not too tricky. Yeah, I give you set cells. <laughs> I'm not going to back this up. Uh, sorry, I meant to collapse this guy. Okay, so set cells, bang, fill remaining. This is where good, I'm going to give you this one because uh, frankly, it's a pain. Fill remaining. This dot cells get objects hash zero square root size. So zero square root size, square root size is nine. Nine is, oh, excuse me, square root size is three, right? What this says is start me at row zero, column three. I'm going to fill remaining starting at row zero, column three. There's no point in doing fill remaining starting here. Like I'm trying to steal two cycles of the CPU. I could start here, but it's going to say, what could be here? One could be here. All right, let's choose one, <laughs> right? What could be here? Two could be here. Let's choose three. So this one is the first one. It's going to be uh, actioned, right? So let's take a look at fill remaining. Okay, beautiful stuff. This is like pretty awesome code when you really think about it. Let's take a look at what it's doing. This is the full method, by the way. You pass in a cell, which we know we're gonna be at uh, zero, three, right? If the cell, if cell is null, return true. Why would the cell be null? Because I did get cell past the puzzle. I've done the puzzle. If I'm trying to do fill remaining and this C is passed in as a null, I'm done. I would only be in this case if I were right there. That's what that uh, fill remaining does. It's the this null check. Now what am I doing here? I'm saying, remember I passed in a cell. I'm saying for that cell, what are the valid values, right? I'm looping around for each number that's a valid value. And I'm passing in the num and I'm saying, for that cell, is that number valid? And, and remember what is valid value is to pass in column and row? Well, now you can pass in C for cell, right? For that cell, is that, va is that a valid number? And if the is valid value is checking for column, checking for row, checking for region. That's either going to be true or false. If it's a valid value, now we're going to try to assign that value in that cell of the puzzle. So I say this dot get puzzled and I'm saying C dot get row, C dot get call equals num. 
this line of code will assign, let's say, four to that cell. Awesome. This is where it gets interesting. If fill remaining C dot get next cell C return, if this is true, return true. What is going on? If this C dot get next cell, remember the get, remember the method in under cell where I pass in a cell to give me the next cell. This is going to give me the next cell, and this is going to pass the next cell into its own method. Okay, I'm calling. I have a method that calls itself. So I started at zero four. Get next cell is zero five. Zero five is passed in to fill remaining. Goes through the same logic. If the next, if the next um, item worked in cell zero five, it's set. And then we do cell six. If it doesn't, if this is not a valid value, in other words, there's a value. The values that are left for the cell can't work. And this is not true. We go down to the next valid value. If all those valid values don't work, we'll return false. Okay. So what happens when I return false? If I return false, then it'll return back to what called me to get in here, which is here. Does that make sense? So this guy, this fill remaining is looking for a true or false return. If it finally returns a false for a value that couldn't be set because there's no valid value, it returns a false in here. That's not, that's not true anymore. It's not gonna return true. It's gonna fall down to this line of code and reset the current number to zero and then call the next valid value for that, for that square. So this is the this is how backtracking works. Once I return a false, let's say let's go back and visually do this. Uh, I set all the values up to here, right? I try get valid values, and none of the values work. None of the values work. It ends up doing a return false. When it returns false, it's going to go what well, one level up the recursion tree, and it's going to end up right here. This is going to be false. It's not going to be, this is going to be a false statement. It's not going to run this code. It's going to fall through to this line of code. And when I fall through this line of code, what I did in essence over here, remember I said I was on this block, this didn't work. It backs me up to right here. And let's say that that value I tried before was seven. And it says, well, I guess I can't use seven. I must use eight. It'll set it to eight if it can and then move forward. If eight doesn't work, in other words, let's say the, the valid eight doesn't work, eight doesn't work because it's right there. We try nine, right? If we'll get into a case where the value, there was no other value, value that would work in this block. Well, if that happens, we're gonna return a false. And when we return a false, it's gonna go back to this square. I'm gonna try the other valid value possibly that could work in this square. If it doesn't work, I go back. I find one, cool, I move forward. Are any valid values? Yes, I move forward. Are there any valid values? And it goes on like that. So I may I may get to a case where I pull, I'm, I'm ready to, to set this one, and it may backtrack me all the way back to here. <laughs> and all this happens like instantly, like the Java code is like really, really fast. It'll, it'll, back, it'll go forward and back many times. Right, and I, I mentioned prior labs to get from here to here to get to, to the end of the tree. You're probably going to be 200 to 300, you know, calls going back and forth. But this one block of code, this one bit of recursion, does it for you. If re, if you don't find a valid value, it'll return false. If it returns false, this is out. It'll set its current value to zero, and it'll try its next value. Fill remaining. Now, could you use fill remaining? Did you have to do all that diagonal diagonal nonsense where you set the re, the the diagonal regions? 
you didn't, but it's, you know, it's a super time saver because you don't, all the valid values in that first bit. So th think about this. Remember, I have, to, I have to table up and put into the hash map all the valid values. Well, if I did that with an empty Sudoku here, that's zero, th that's one through nine. One through nine, one through nine, one through nine, one through nine, right? So I'm, at least I'm taking a bite out of the valid values. I, just from here, I took out one, two, three, four, five different values. So instead of a, you know, a nine times 81 <laughs> things in a hash map, uh, it's, you know, maybe five. It might be four by the time you get done things. Now, it's, it's the key with this whole valid values thing, it's not looking, we're not going to get down to here and then say, hey, what's the valid values for this? You don't do it like that because you may have to backtrack and use the other value. Very cool. So imagine at the end of this, at the end of this statement, you are at the end of the constructor for Sudoku. You are already, let's see, ba, 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 ba. you are at the end of the constructor for Sudoku. One more, sorry. And I've got a valid Sudoku. I've got a valid, um, repeatable Sudoku. And I'm going to just pop up a unit test and sort of prove that. I'm going to unit test Sudoku. And this is my printed Sudoku, by the way. Um, actually, there's three different printed Sudokus. Nine, am I right? No, I'm sorry. This is one big Sudoku. 917-256-834. That's cool. Doesn't break the region. No repeating values here. No repeating in the column, right? This started with this, you know, region zero, region four, region eight. And then using set cells and fill remaining for the other cells. And if I want to, you know what I'll do is let's make it interesting. I'm going to go back over to, you know, I'm not going to ask you to do this, but I'm going to go back over to Sudoku. And I got the, got this to print with one set. Uh, comments of this stuff. That print puzzle was where I'm looking for. Print puzzle right there. S1 print puzzle. I'm going to go into Sudoku and write in the fill. Fill remaining. Remember fill remaining? Right here. I'm going to say this dot print puzzle. You're going to like this. And I'm going to run this thing. Watch it. Watch it go. And it's printing off a million things now. Watch what happened. It finished. Okay. Let's scroll up. Let's see what we got. Yeah, it's printed so many that it, it cut off my print. <laughs> like it's, I only have 8,000 lines or whatever to print. Uh, let's see if I can find, hold on, hold on. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It printed so many of these things. Here we go. All right. So let's take a look at, nine, five, three, seven hundred. Okay. So check it. Five one eight six nine two. So I'm all the way down to this nine five three zero zero zero. This one's not going to go. This one's not going to be set back because that was one of the diagonals. That's not going to get set back at all. Okay. So nine five three seven nine five three, and this is saying I've got to use the other value for this one, and I picked seven, and seven worked. Cool. And then I try to pick seven, and one worked, and one worked, and that's cool. Now I'm going to try to pick the next one, seven, right? Seven, one, one didn't work, so four may work. Then it tries this, and then it goes, oh crap, I can't use seven, I can't use four, I gotta get all the way back and zero out the seven. The seven's not gonna work. I'm now gonna try seven and then one and then three, that seems to work so far, cool. Uh, 
eight six two is not gonna I'm not gonna worry about that because it's gonna be done. And then I go down to two. Two seems to work. And then two six works. Okay, okay. Then two six one works. Okay. So far, no violations. And then I got two six one eight works. Excellent. Two six one eight five. Two six one eight five. Then that five's not gonna work. So I'm gonna try to use four. Two six one. Where'd it go? Two six one eight four. <laughs> okay, so it got down to that that stupid eight four zero. It couldn't get a value for that zero. It couldn't get the value for that zero. So I had to backtrack all the way back to the two that we tried there, and it's using eight now. And it's saying I had to use. I got down to here, and backtracked all the way back to here, and now I'm using eight. And I'm using eight, and I tried eight six, and eight six works. 861, 861 works, 8612 works, 86125 works, 86124 works, and none of it works again. And now not only did I backtrack here, I backtracked all the way to here. <laughs> you know, I had to keep going back. Uh, you get the idea, right? And it's like I said, this happens in I'm let's see my scroll bar, I'm all the way at the top of this thing. This may happen dozens of times right? Before, before you get a, an actual solution for a Sudoku. I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down, I'm still seeing zeros, that means it hasn't figured out a solution yet. And, oh boy, yeah. Trust me when I tell you, at the end of this, at the end of this, it's going to be done, <laughs> but it's going to be interesting, right? So let's take a look at, look at the last few, like, nibbles it had to do. It finally said three seven eight nine zero zero. These last two have to be done. It tries three seven eight nine two. That works so far. And then th three seven eight nine two six. I have a Sudoku that works, and that ends up being my solution. That recursive code does all that work. There's no other way to do it. <laughs> if you did it by just picking random numbers and then starting again. Maybe if you had like a you know super super computer, you could do it like that. But it's not a good uh, method. By the way, without the prints, this happens pretty quick. Let me take the prints out. Let me take the prints out of the the fill. Watch how quickly this thing generates one. Like, instantly, right? This is. I mean, I I'm, I, did, I actually have two different unit tests in here. It's doing it pretty, or one different unit test. It does it pretty much in, in, instantly. Run it again. A second, right? So it did 500, you know, recursive calls, and worked itself out for a decent. And if you look at it, looks to me pretty random, right? I mean, I'm not seeing. I see nines up top. I see nines again, fours. Ones, pretty good, pretty random, very cool. Okay, all right, let's recap what you gotta do. I want the rest of this constructor done. I want fill diagonal, well, that's done. I want set cells done, I want fill remaining done. Fill remaining, I gave you, I'll give you the cell thing. <laughs> Uh, it's not that hard with class. It's just a little bit of typing to do. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? This should, you should be able to find any solution to any partial Sudoku with this code, I think. You should be able to fill any solution with this code. Can I make that assertion? I can make this assertion. Think about this. In the Sudoku constructor where you're passing over a puzzle. In the Sudoku constructor where you're passing over a puzzle, if you did this and this, and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. If you run those two methods, passing in a puzzle, that puzzle is a partial puzzle, right? So you're passing in a partial puzzle into this. 
you run this, you got to solve, solve Sudoku. You'll get at least one solution out of this solve Sudoku. Right? Because it'll, all it's going to do is fill out what, it, what, what works, right? As a matter of fact, it'll even throw an exception if it can't be solved. So if you gave some bum values that like you, you put in one, two, three, right? Um, it will, it will try to set the values, but when you do it is Sudoku, it won't be a, it won't be a true Sudoku. Now, what would you have to do to, what would you have to do <laughs> if you wanted to find all the possible Sudokus for a given partial Sudoku? What I mean by that is, let's say you had, here's your partial Sudoku, right? You grab it out of the paper, sorry. You grab it out of the paper and the paper has that. <laughs> One and two, like two values out of 81 values set. How many solutions does this have? Well, just looking at it, it's got one. I could definitely get one solution out of this thing. It's going to be 100,000 calls to, you know, to do the backtracking, but I'll get a solution out of it. But there's more than likely dozens of solutions for this. There's many ways this can go. Can our code do the many ways to go? Let's think about that. Can I get this code? If I ran it, if I ran it like this, it's going to find me the first solution it's going to find. That's what it's going to do, right? But I don't want just the first solution. I wanted all solutions. So maybe, what can I do? What could I do? I could... I could call fill remaining, okay? I could, I could do something like create a, an array list of puzzles, right? An array list of Sudokus, I take that back. An array list of Sudokus and start this fill remaining, right? Let me think. Yeah, that's how you do it you would have um, an array list of Sudokus and you'd have a while true, right? A while true loop around fill remaining. And you call the, you, kill, you call fill remaining until, um, until it throws an exception because it's eventually gonna throw an exception when it's out of bounds. So what that, what I mean by that is the first time through it's gonna find, uh, it's gonna find a, um, solution and it's going to have set cells and it's going to have the value that that cell was on the last value that that cell was on is kept i believe and then i think the second time you go through fill remaining it's going to try to run the tumblers from the state that it was in okay so not part of the lab but you could get this thing to solve every possible solution right as it is right now, it's going to solve um, a given solution. You pass it a given solution, this thing will solve it. Let's see if I can prove that. <laughs> I'm going to torture you a little bit. Let's see if I can prove that. I'm going to go to my Sudoku test. I've got a halfway decent Sudoku test. I'm going to try it. Let's see. I'm going to take this method here. Okay. I'm going to try to... Sudoku partial one. Sudoku partial one. So let us see what we got. I'm just doing line, line breaks so uh, I can read this thing. So line break there. And line break there. And there. And there. And there. And there. And how about there? So you can read it. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. Trust when I tell you it's eight columns, right? I'm going to make all these zero, 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 zero. And I'm gonna make one, two, three, that's four, five, six, seven, eight. Do I have enough? I'm missing one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more. 
I make sure I end this correctly. So I'm going to go like this all the way down to get up there. Like that one there. I like that. That's a zero by zero. That's a starting Sudoku, right? And what did I say in my Excel? I said the second column, third from the bottom row, so somewhere around there, a one, and then somewhere around here for a two. If this doesn't work, I'm not going to ruin this whole video. I think I can get this thing to work, though. I pass into the puzzle. I'm saying Sudoku S1, Sudoku puzzle, assert false, assert true. This, this better be a Sudoku. Let's see, assert true. And I'm going to do s puzzle, And just so you know, I'm not cheating and using a different method. Let's comment this other test method out and see what we got. I think it'll work. Cross my fingers. It may take longer than the other one. Like I said, it's going to take longer because it's got, it's got, there's no set cells for those diagonals, right? <sighs> Maybe I should give him more than two values. <laughs> Maybe, but let me let me stop this and maybe more than two values because this is now getting like exponential, right? It's checking 10, ver 10 versus 10 versus 10 versus 10 and it's having to backtrack thousands of times. How about if we give it a little bit of a break and say, I'm going to say that this is two, one, eh, I know it's going to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's going to give the first region. At least take up some of those values. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No violations in column two. No violations in row two. Nope. Let's see if this works. Uh, it doesn't like it. Let's see what it do. And why did it get a failure? Wonder why I get a failure. I bet. Hmm. I bet that I'm skipping over these. Remember the fill diagonal reason to get next cell? I bet you I'm skipping over that. Let's see. Let's see if it's. I'll prove it by I'll fill out the one, two, threes for the for the three regions. One, two, three. Because I probably wrote that couldn't set out. I'll, I'll, I'll never have to deal with those diagonal stuff, so I'm just gonna skip over it. When I do the get next cell. All right. Again, I'm not gonna collide, I don't think, two, uh, two collided, so I'm gonna have to say three and two. All right, try that again. Yeah. How come? All right. You're going to make me trace it then. Why not? So here I am. Set cells. Fill remaining. Objects that has zero. So okay. So let's try this. Put a breakpoint in there and test. And it's going to put me over to debug perspective. <sighs> I should have done it. But let's say I'm going to step in. Step out, step in, don't care, step in, okay, let me break, okay, I want to do a, I want to stop on fill remaining, I think, and I'm going to put a stop right there, bang, stop right there, and continue, if C is null, which is not some cell, okay, I'm, I've got a list of valid values, so the valid values for this is for that first cell. <sighs> Quick watch, valid values. Nine works, six works, eight works, five works, okay. Is value in the puzzle? If it isn't, fill it out. I'm in fill remaining. I have the next cell. That should have worked. Cool. I've got value. I've got valid values all over the place. Okay. So 
So far it's working. I'm gonna get down to, I'll put a stop right there on the return null. Hmm. Uh, okay, what was the failure then? Maybe I, I stepped over the assertion error. Well, it should have given me values for those other things. It's not, it's failing on the, the, I'm trying to assert that it's a Sudoku and it's not. S1, S1, Sudoku puzzle. Mm, 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 mm. Is there anything other special I did with, go back over to Sudoku. Sorry to hijack this. This shouldn't have worked. Let's go back over to, Fill diagonal regions. That doesn't do anything but set those values. Set cells. I'm running set cells. Fill remaining. Starting with the object hash of square root size. Is square root size set? Uh, let's see. Hold on. I don't know if I did that. Let's see. Toggle breakpoint. Test. Run and debug. I'm only going to do this for like another minute. I'm going to give in a second. All right, so there's the puzzle being sent in. Cool. There's the size. Let's see if the square root size is set. That's a good old three. If it works, the square root size is set. Okay, so cool. It gets the set cells. Set cells is done. And you know what I'm going to do is... Oops. Sorry, I took out the stop there. Go back to Sudoku. There we go. I will put the stop there. And I'll do Latin square. I'm going to do this one more time. So darn close. All right, so I'm there. Run it to remain, fill remaining. I'll run it to set cell. There we go. All right. I'm going to get this thing. So get puzzle. So right there, at least, that num four should have been in get puzzle, whatever, right? And I'm gonna run this until I got a false, that's fine. Let me put a let me put a uh, Skew uh, C, yeah. I'm on column eight, row one. So I'm, it's moving, column eight, row one. Is it possible I gave it a bad, like a bad value? And it just gave up? In other words, it may have got it so many bad values that backtrack all the way to. I should do a print puzzle in this damn thing, right? Just to see the state of it. Now I'm sitting on row, column seven row. This is going. It's sort of just meandering back and forth. Did I ever give it? All right, I'm gonna play through this. Take this breakpoint out and play through it. Still didn't do it, so let's stop with this thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventy nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventy nine. Fuck me. That's why I did it. One. <laughs> I gave it a value that doesn't work. Arg. <laughs> Smarter than that. I knew I should have done that. Um, okay. Yeah, that one collides with that one. You can't do it there. So I'm going to put the one 
there and the zero there. Yikes. Okay, try this again. Close out. Don't need debug. Bang. All right. What's up? Did I collide somewhere else? Did I have a two over here somewhere? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That one. That two should have worked. No? That two should have worked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, let's let's get rid of these values. This is what the whole point of this was to try to do it with some values in there. That works, but if I give a value it doesn't work. Mm, you know what? I bet you the values that I gave would never have worked. So what I'm trying to say is, let's say that eight, that definitely can work to generate is an, generate an eight. I'm gonna stick an eight in here, right? So I gave it a, a solution, I gave it a problem that can't be solved, that's why it couldn't do it. I'm gonna put an eight there and I'm gonna put a five up here. Five up here. I thought I, thought I had it right. <laughs> Eight here and a five up there that we know work because we saw we saw a generated Sudoku with eight and five. Let's see if that works. Oh, you son of a bitch. It doesn't work. Hmm. Five works. Eight works. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Not going to spend any more time in it. Hmm. Five works and eight works, but it didn't generate it for me. It sounds like something that's happening in set cells. It sounds like something that's happening in set cells. Am I saying if it's valued only? Okay. It's some, it sounds like something I'm doing in set cells. How it knows what can be picked. Sorry guys, what I need to do is, I, I know what's happening here, okay? What's happening is, even though this eight and this five are valid values, because it has to do backtracking, it's not able to cycle through the other valid values to do backtracking to solve the future values. So what set cells should be doing is when I give a value, it should be giving, it should also have the other values it could be, if that makes sense. Anyway, <laughs> this is a little trickier than I thought. Um, anyway, so what I want you to do for lab four, let's go back to lab four. I want you to finish out the fill remaining and the cell. And I think the hardest one for you for lab four is going to be set cells, which I'm not going to give you the implementation for. Set cells is pretty pretty basic. It is, uh, yep, okay. Um, you're going to be calling this method called get all valid values for a cell. So all this does is it says you're passing in a column and a row and you're going to pass back a hash set. And it says, for this given column and row, what are the valid values for the row, for the column, and for the region? And we're gonna put those together in one hash set. There's a thousand different ways to do this. This is probably the easiest way to do it. Okay. So here at the end of lab four, what do we really have? We should have Latin square solid. We should have um, Sudoku pretty much solid. We've got the unit testing solid. The only thing we got to do now, not only thing, but the next thing we have to do now is the UI portion of this. So the second project in this is going to be a, a Java FX project to show the UI co components of the project. Um, in other words, the game, the, like the, a, a UI with the game with the, you know, the, the grid and you can drag and drop numbers and, and uh, play the game, if you will, right? The business logic was in this project, 
the presentation is going to be in the next project. That's lab five, six, and seven is going to be that. Now, down the road, we may need new methods in the logic layer that we didn't think about. All right, we're trying to get all the methods done now, but there might be somewhere we'll say, oh, there's some logic that has to happen. That method has to be added to the BLL, right? Um, very doubtful, but there might be something in Latin square that might have to be added. So I, I can't say that the BOL is done, but it's it's pretty close to being done. I pretty much have all the methods that we need. Okay, Let's walk for lab four. We're getting, we're almost halfway there. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.